Thank you for joining us at the New York Stock Exchange. I'm Olivia Bonovaznenko, and I am chatting it up with Sarge today. Hey, Stephen, how's it going? Pretty good. I'm glad to be here, Olivia. Thank you. Long time no see. What has happened economically since we last spoke? Well, you know, the it's almost hard for me to admit it because I'm usually kind of negative, but the U.S. economy had a pretty good June. All right. I mean, retail sales were hot. Again, it's been a few months in a row. The, C the core CPI came in 2.3% year over year, which is about the eighth month in a row that that's been above, at or above the Fed stated target. The housing numbers, whether it's existing home sales or, uh, or housing starts have been positive, and even industrial production and the manufacturing sector seem to have turned a corner. So yeah, June's been strong. Now the July numbers, are they as strong? We'll see. We got the Philly Fed this morning, although the headline number was negative. The underlying data really wasn't that bad. That was a positive. Uh, initial jobless claims remained low. Generally, the economy isn't in the bad spot that it was in for all this time. Let's see if we can keep it going. All right. And we also got word from the ECB and the BOJ. How are the currency markets doing? Hey, the currency markets had quite a day. All right. I mean, first off, the BBC Radio put that interview on the air this morning with BOJ Governor Kuroda where he kind of dismissed the idea of helicopter money or this gigantic stimulus package that everyone kind of expects the BOJ to go ahead with next week. And they didn't tell anyone that the interview was five or six weeks old. Obviously, the currency markets reacted in a decisive fashion. The, uh, the Japanese yen immediately strengthened a couple of pennies against the dollar. And then it backed off once we found out that this interview was quite old. So there was, there was quite a move there for the DXY as well. Then later on, when Mario Draghi did his speech, you know, I mean, normally the euro does ease while he's speaking, but this time it spiked originally because he didn't really go anywhere in his speech until later on where he spoke about being accommodative and if Brexit turns out to be worse than it is right now, how they're going to act and how the, how the banking sector will play a role in this and buying all the stuff they need to buy because there's so many things they need to buy and there's not really enough supply to buy it. But he addressed all those issues and, and then the, the euro tested 110 support again where it's been on and off again, I guess, for about a couple of weeks. Well, we've had a lot of economic action, and we're also in the thick of earnings season. Any highlights today? You know, General Motors was very exciting today. And I mean, of all, because there were so many today to look at. And we're seeing a lot of year-over-year -year revenue numbers that are higher year-over-year, -year, which we haven't seen in quite some time. Usually we're talking about how bad earnings are, and they're supposed to be terrible this quarter. But I guess about 60% of the stocks I'm following are actually looking pretty good after their earnings numbers, which is interesting. But General Motors, why that one sticks out they had a $137 million profit in Europe, which they haven't had a profitable number in Europe in about five years. And that pushed them over the top. We, have, we saw a nice 4% pop pre-open. Now it's come in quite a bit with the market coming in as well. So it's only up a little bit on a day, but that I think was the one caveat. And you'll hear from Ford next week, along with a ton of other companies as well. That's next Thursday. Let's see if, the, let's see if it's the whole auto industry or just General Motors. Right, and since we're not gonna be seeing you next Thursday, anything else we should be looking out for? Well, along with that BOJ meeting, which is going to be very important for all markets next week, that's, you'll get that news on Friday after you go to sleep on Thursday night. They'll, they'll do what they have to do. You'll hear about it on Friday morning. We also have the Fed. We have the FOMC. And you'll hear their policy decision on Wednesday. Now, they're not going to go in and do anything. They're going to hold their fire, but they're going to, because of that stronger June macro data that we spoke about, they're going to set up September as a live meeting, whether they mean it or not, because they're going to want you to believe they mean it. You'll also get GDP numbers from the U.S. and the Eurozone by Friday. Nice. Well, Stephen, glad we can grab you off the floor today. And until next time. Until next time, my friend.